Hey everybody, Jim Peterson here at Spokane Fitness Center. I'm the Director of Personal Training. I am a certified personal trainer. I am doing these workouts to try to help you guys maintain your muscle mass and your strength without having any weights to use at home. So we use a lot of isometric and slow tempo movements to do this, to reach these goals. So you can actually be building some muscle even though we don't have very much weight. Now today, we're going to do regressive range of motion exercises, which are simply really slow tempo. And then as we get to failure, we, we limit the range of motion that we're going on the exercise. So today, if you do have some weight and you want to use that, like your backpack, if you want to go grab your backpack, you can do that. We'll probably be doing some table rows. So grab a chair, get your table, get that thing set up. If you have your a stick with some chairs, you could do that because we're going to be doing a rowing motion. We're going to be doing a row motion, okay? So I want to work more of the upper, mid, middle, upper back on that guy, which means I want to, if I was up on the floor here like this, then I'm going to grab the table and I'm going to be doing these guys. But I want to have you in a position where you can do your full range of motion, okay? So set something up like that guy. We'll do our chest as our push-up today. So we'll get our legs, our chest, and our back in. Um, if you don't have any weights, that's fine. As far as your legs go today, you could do either a squat motion or a variation of a squat or a lunge. So if you go one leg at a time with a lunge, then you're probably going to be fine without any weight. Don't worry about that. Okay. So. Uh, get that stuff ready. If you're not warmed up yet, go ahead and get yourself moving, get yourself warmed up. Uh, do some sumo stretches, sumo squat stretches where your feet are nice and wide and you do a real deep squat and then you come all the way up and press your hips out and, and your arms back and, and back down again. We want to get everything that good and warmed up here. So do about 15 or 20 of those guys. Good, good stretch. Get good movement with them. And do some jumping jacks, do uh, maybe some high knees if you want to, high knees, you know, run if you want to try to get your heart rate going up, which would be great. We're not going to do any core today, so, you know, specifically on our core. So I would suggest get down on the floor, get on your back, do a minute of bicycles, do a minute of mountain climbers, you know, get your heart rate up pretty good, and then we'll get going on the workout. So you can go ahead and hit pause on me here and then we'll uh, get moving on this. So when we're gonna start, we're gonna try to engage our muscles. So we really, again, we're focusing on uh, contracting our muscles. And so it's a mind-muscle connection that we're trying to do in these workouts. So the more that you focus on trying to squeeze all the blood out of your muscles that we're working, the more effective it's gonna be for you, okay? so. Uh, first, isometrics. We're going to do some overcoming isometric movements, which, in, which means we're going to try to move something that's immovable. And since we're using, doing our legs and our chest and our back, we're going to use either the hallway or a door jam as a leg press, and we're going to try to press through that. So you'll need to grab a pillow, sit down on the floor, put the pillow behind your back, get your leg up. Put your leg up into the door jam, and you're going to try to press through that door jam as hard as you can for six seconds, and then give yourself a 10 second rest. Six seconds on, 10 seconds rest. So if you're like me, you're counting to six, which you end up counting to about 10 because you really need to focus so much. Your entire body's tense, you're tight everywhere, and you're really trying to focus on all those muscles in your leg pressing through that so everything is engaged, it's tight, it's working as hard as it can. Okay, so you get through six sets of those on one leg, six sets on the other leg. Then you're going to do your chest, you're going to go to a hallway or your door jam, whatever you have that you could use like a pec fly type motion. Your upper body is going to be straight up and down, your arms are going to be straight out from you and you're just going to try to squeeze them together. Okay. Squeeze them together as tight as you can. When you do that and you feel your chest, you can feel all the muscles from all the way top to the bottom of your chest engage. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do. Again, six seconds, pressing as hard as you can together, 
10 second rest. Six seconds, 10 seconds. Try to tense up your entire body as you're doing these, okay? And then we're gonna do our back. So you're gonna use the door jam again, where you can stick your hand inside the door on the other side of the door jam. And you got one in front of you. You could be on the floor, you can stand up if you want, and you're just gonna try to press. Now it's easier to be on the floor and balance yourself with like a foot up against the, the wall or the door. Today we're gonna try to focus more on our upper, mid, upper back. So if you wanna to try to pull that and kinda of keep your upper body bent back a little bit more than normal, then you could do that guy, okay? So try to do that. Again, you gotta do both sides, you know, after you do. So do all six sets on one side, all six sets on the other side. And then when you're done with that, you can come back to me, then our muscles will have been engaged and we'll be ready to go through our regressive range of motion exercise, okay? So our regressive range of motion is where we wanna do some type of a leg motion exercise, the first part, where we're gonna to get to failure around 10 to 12 reps. And then we're gonna to try to continue to go, but we're gonna limit the range of motion. Okay, so let's say I've got my backpack on, got all my weight on there, and I'm gonna, I can just do squats. So I'm, I'm good enough, I'm strong enough, quote unquote strong enough, where I can do a good squat with my pack on, and I can go up and down, maybe I'm gonna go six, seven seconds up, six, seven, nice and slow, six seconds down. So I'm gonna do those, and let's say, okay, so I'm, I'm doing those guys, my full range of motion, all the way up, all the way down. Now remember, you're focusing on your muscles, and you're trying to squeeze all the blood out of them, okay? So you're trying to, they're tight, they're so tight, and doing your squat, your entire body should be tight. Your whole core, everything should be tight with these, okay? If you don't have weights, get that one leg in front of you, and get all as much weight of the, on you, that one leg as you can. Put that other leg back up onto something. Get all that weight as much as you can on there. Engage everything in your legs. Tense everything else up. Do a full range, and then, when you feel like you might have one more in you, I want you to start, start to slowly reduce the range of motion. So instead of going all the way down in a squat, all the way back up, now you're gonna go down about halfway, and you're gonna come back up. And you're gonna keep them really slow. Okay, I can go about this far now. You know, I'm gonna go back, I can get up here, okay. Now, again, you gotta really focus Mind over muscle on these guys. The better you do, the better it's gonna be for you. So keep going. Now imagine if you're doing one leg at a time and you're going up and down like this, you're not, you're not gonna be able to go very fast and do a lot of them like that. So that's your game plan here. You're gonna to get to around 10 or 12 reps. You're gonna limit the range of motion. You're gonna end up to being where you can just barely go up and down, and then you're gonna stop. Okay, so I want you to get about 10 to 12, maybe five or six more in a limited range of motion, and that's all you can do, okay? So again, you're gonna to have to figure out what position you want your legs in to be able to focus as much weight as possible on one leg that you're trying to work. And then you're gonna do three sets on that one leg, then you're gonna to go to the other leg, and you're gonna do three sets on that guy. Now with these, you can rest up to a minute and a half to two minutes between the sets, okay? So go ahead and take a rest and then come back and finish them up. So that's for your legs. Now for your chest, you're gonna do the same sort of thing, but you're gonna be doing a push-up motion. So again, when you're doing your push-up, make sure you keep your plank nice and tight, okay? So straight up and down, however you need to do your push-up, that's what you're gonna do. If you need to, you know, put your feet up on the wall to make it a little harder, go for it. If you need to be on your knees while you're doing it, go for it. Whatever you need to do. But again, doing push-ups, and if you're counting five, six, seven seconds on every single eccentric and concentric motion, you're going to be pretty tired by the time you hit 10 or 12, hopefully. If that isn't going to work for you, then you're going to have to get some weight on it, right? 
So go grab the cat and have the cat jump, cat jump on your back or something. So you're going to go down. And then for this guy, it's at the top of the range of the motion. So for our push-up, we're going to be near the top. So let's say I'm doing my push-up. Okay. Nice and straight. I'm going really slow down. All the way to the floor. Really slow up. So I'll say, okay, I feel like I might have one more of me. And I'm going to limit that guy. I'm going to go to about halfway down. Okay. Squeeze. Now this whole time, you're squeezing all of your chest. Your whole body is tense. But you're really focusing on trying to squeeze all of that blood out of that chest. And you're limiting that range of motion. So on the chest push-up, you're going about this far up and down at the end. And then when you run out of juice, again, you want to do it at a tempo that is hard as possible that you could do. I know it, it sounds backwards, but that's what you want to do. So you want to make it as difficult as possible, but you're able to do it. Okay. So you, again, you're going to go to failure on those guys. You're going to rest three, two minutes on your push up, and then you're going to go after all over again. Okay, so you got three sets of those, and then you're going to do your back. And I really don't have anything to practice with my back, so I'll just do it like I have a table here. But with your back, I want you to try to focus on the upper middle part of your back. So if you could get under a table and have your legs or feet or butt up on a chair, possibly, so that if I, were, if I were laying down, that would be, again, like the opposite of a push-up, upside down. And I'd be able to pull myself up, up and down this way. Okay? So, again, you're going to want to try to do those nice and slow. These will be hard to really focus on your back muscles. You're squeezing your shoulder blades together at the very top and nice and slow. And you're keeping everything nice and tense. So you're going to try to get at a slow pace, tempo, to about 10 to 12. When you don't feel like you're going to be able to do anymore, again, you're going to be at the top of that, right? So, <laughs> so my push-up was, I'm at the top. Well, my, my, my row is going to be the opposite. I'm at the top, and I'm coming back. I'm at the top, and I'm coming back. So that's going to be hard, okay? So, did I do that backwards? So this is where you're at. Okay, and then uh, you got three sets of those again, take two minute rest, and then go ahead and uh, we'll get moving to the next guy, which is going to be our loaded stretching. So we're going to do a total of three minutes with our loaded stretching here. That same type of a movement that you did for your legs, you're going to go down to the bottom. So say if I just did my squat, I'm going to go down to the bottom of my squat. I'm going to come back up about two or three inches where it does not feel comfortable. And I want, I'm going to try to squeeze all the blood out of my muscles. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to really focus as hard as I can. Now I want to emphasize something you guys. If you're doing lunges and you can get your leg behind you and you got your leg in front of you and you're used to doing lunges like this and you can sit here for two days because I have half of my weight on my leg and I'm not even really squeezing my, my leg up here very much. I got half of my weight back here. That's the exact opposite thing we want to happen here. If you're going to be doing lunges, then you're going to have to focus on having this leg doing all this work 
The one behind you is just balancing you and you're up and down, straight up and down, and you're trying to squeeze everything out of that leg. So you're trying to squeeze that muscle so tight, now my whole body's tense. Okay, so 45 seconds like that is gonna be hard. I want you guys to get into a position where you could go between 45 seconds and a minute and a half. Okay, because you're doing a total of three minutes. That's our loaded stretching, a total of three minutes. You're squeezing those muscles as tight as you can. When you go 45 seconds and you gotta stop and take a break, you can take a 10 to 15 second rest and then get right back to it, okay? Five second rest, great. But your focus is to try to keep squeezing all that the blood out of that muscle, okay? So if you need to take a rest, I don't want you to get up and start shaking it out. That's the opposite thing I want you to do. I want you to stay in that position where you're at. So if you're doing a lunge, and you're down, and I'm down, and I had to take a break, I had to drop to my knee, I'm gonna rest for five or 10 seconds, and I'm gonna get back it up, and I'm gonna squeeze it. Now here's the thing, each one you do, that has to be at least 45 seconds, because I want you to get a total of three minutes in within four reps, okay? So within four sets, reps, I don't care what you wanna call it, you'll have four sets to get a total of three minutes done. You're gonna do your legs, you're going to do your chest, again, at the bottom. You're going to be just above, okay? And your row, which is going to be hard because your row, you're going to be at the top, and you're going to try to keep squeezing it at the top. So this is the opposite of what we were doing just now with a regressive range of motion, where when I got too tired, I was near the top of my squat. Now I'm going to try to hold this thing at the bottom of my squat, I was at the top of my push-up, now I'm at the bottom of my push-up. I was at the top of my row, now I'm at the, basically the bottom of my row. Okay, so a total of three minutes on each one of those. You can give yourself a minute or two rest between the legs and the chest and the upper body. But while you're doing it, try to do it as quickly as you can. But, I mean, keep your breaks as short as possible. Let's put it that way, okay? All right, so then when you get done with that, I want you to do some either burpees or some jump squats, okay? Give yourself a couple minute rest, and I want you to do a total of 30 reps. You can break them up any way you want. If you can do a burpee, then fantastic, do the burpee. If the burpee is a little too much for you, then just do a jump squat. If jumping off the floor is too much for you, just do a fast squat motion like you are jumping off the floor but try to give yourself a little bit of an explosive, motion, explosive movement at the bottom. Woo! So, squat, if I'm gonna do a squat jump, when I get to the bottom, try to, from the bottom, try to jump, just go up as fast as you can. Okay, your burpee, same kind of thing. When you get down, do your burpee, get back to your squat, jump up, okay? Just try to do 30 as quickly as you can. And then when you're done with your burpees, I want you to try to do, if you're able to, get outside, it's beautiful, right? It's not raining, I hope. So get outside and try to do some short sprints. If you're not used to running, if that's not a part of your program, your part of your thing, then just still go out there, try to get a little run in, and just try to run as quickly as you can with a good form for about 20 yards and then slow down and rest. If, you, if you're good with it, and you guys are focusing on your muscle building and your power, then you can get up to about 60 yard sprint, and then slowly slow down, relax, get your breath back, if you have your heart rate monitor on, down to about the 120 to 130s, and then go back at it again. Okay, so once basically when you get your bearings, so give yourself a couple minutes between each set. You could do four to six sets if you have the, the ability and the time to do it. If you are focused more on fat loss and endurance, then I want you to do at least 200 yard runs today. And you're not going to be able to sprint probably for a quarter of a mile or an eighth of a mile, but um, just try to get up and run 
at a pace faster than you normally do. Okay, just try to push yourself for at least 200 yards. So 200 yards is an eighth of a mile. If you have something that you can mark out for say a quarter of a mile, an eighth of a mile, you know, that's about where you'd be at today, okay? So if you can't do that, then just try to do some other stuff like um, we had our mountain climbers and our jumping jacks. So finish with some of that stuff. I just want you to finish with your heart rate up, okay? So that's it. Good job, you guys. Way to go. Keep it up. And, uh, you know, hopefully these things are still, will, still working for you. So, um, hey, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. So today is our leg, back, and chest. Tomorrow we're going to do some more shoulder, core, and some arms. All right? Well, have a great day. Good job, you guys.